Just believe yourself. Don't give up. 여러분 그 커뮤니티가 얼마나 중요한지 아 제가 정말 여러 번그 말씀을 드렸어요. 왜냐하면 저도 몇 년간 이렇게 공부를 하면서 알게 되었는데 김미경이 하고 있는 어떤 비즈니스의 모델이 과연 무엇인가를 제가 생각을 해봤었는데 그게 뭐냐 하면 저는 강의를 하고 있었던 것이 아니라 내 컨텐츠를 말함으로 인해서 어, 내 커뮤니티를 30년간 만들고 있었던 거예요. 한때 되게 유명한 연예인이었어요. 근데 그 사람은 어떻게 해요? 그냥 어, 방송국에서 부르면 가서 어, 방송 출연하고 그러니까 중간에 누가 있었어요? 방송국이 있었죠. 근데 만약에 방송국에서 나를 안 불러줘? 그럼 어떻게 돼요? 그냥 나는 인지도가 뚝 떨어지고 마는 거죠. 그럼 과거에 10년 전에 아무리 유명했던 연예인이라 할지라도 나이 50대, 60대가 자면 먹고 살 길이 막막한 거예요. 왜냐? 내 커뮤니티가 없으니까요. 그래서 요즘 많은 기업들이 왜 그렇게 커뮤니티를 만들려고 애를 쓸까요? 그 이유는 커뮤니티와 함께 제품이 성장하고 사람이 성장하고 지속 가능해지기 때문이에요. 저는 지난 30년 동안 강의도 했지만 강의를 통해서 제 커뮤니티를 만들어 왔던 겁니다. 그걸 깨닫게 해준 책이 바로 바로 이 책입니다. 음, 당신을 초대합니다. 존 리비라는 분은요. 참 재밌는 사람이에요. 아주 평범하게 어, 어린 시절을 보냈는데 아, 내가 어디에 속해 있는지가 나라는 사람을 규정해주고 커뮤니티 실력이 내 실력이다. 곧내 실력이다. 이런 걸 깨닫기 시작하면서 이분이 어, 저녁 식사에 사람들을 초대하기 시작했습니다. 뭐 주위에 있는 뭐 헤어, 헤어 살롱에서 일하는 분, 아는 분들 한 10명 정도 그렇게 12년을 인플루언서 디너를 계속 해왔어요. 물론 처음부터 유명했던 사람이 온건 아니죠. 정말 존은 전 세계적으로 모르는 사람이 없을 정도로 자 근데 이 사람은 매우 평범한 청년이었습니다. 누군가를 초대하고 그걸 커뮤니티를 만들므로 인해서 어마어마한 위치까지 오르게 된 거죠. 저는 여러분에게 이 세상에서 제일 좋은 무자본 창업이 커뮤니티 창업이라는 생각이 듭니다. 그래서 어, 존을 꼭 여러분에게 소개해드리고 싶었었고 전에 한번 북드라마를 잠깐 얘기했는데 이책못 읽어보신 분들 다시 한번 꼭 읽어보시고요. 그리고 뒤에 이어서 제가 여러분이 궁금해할 만한 것들을 존에게 다 인터뷰로 물어봤습니다. 여러분 인터뷰 보시면서 많은 인사이트 용기 시작할 수 있는 힘 얻으시기 바랍니다. So, John, are you ready? Let's get started. Absolutely. Let's okay. do this. 10 questions, okay? The first question is, why don't you start by talking about your recent trip to Korea? You were here during the Thanksgiving holiday last year, and I even got mm -hmm. to court and eat turkey with you here at my office. That was my first time to experience that turkey, okay? Then we had a great time at dinner with some of my friends, and this yeah, was, was your fantastic. first visit to Korea, right? How was your oh, yeah, trip? Yeah. I, I had so much fun. So first of all, everybody is super friendly and ah. it feels incredibly safe. I mean, I grew up in New York. It, it's a little bit different, right? Uh, so everything feels really safe. Everybody's very friendly. And it was pretty amazing mm -hmm. getting to come to another culture and see the effort that everybody went to to make me feel so welcome. Actually getting to celebrate Thanksgiving with all of you. which is very much like one of my traditions. And the fact that you went out of your way to make me feel so welcome was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. Okay. All right. So you are able to achieve success by creating mm -hmm. a community. Could you tell us how it all started and how you became who you are today? Oh, wow. Okay. So let me start off with... Uh, If you were to meet me 15 years ago, you mm -hmm. might think I'm a very nice person, but you wouldn't think, oh, he's destined to do something extraordinary. I was, you know, just another guy. Mm. And I was, uh, I went to a seminar because my belief was that no matter what I do, I always have to be growing. I always have to be learning and mm. taking whatever it is that I'm doing to that next level. Mm. Um, and I was, sitting in a seminar and the person who was leading the seminar said that the biggest impact on our life is the people that we surround ourselves with and the conversations that we say to each other. 
And I said, if this is true, then I need to change the way that I'm acting in life. Mm. Because what I would try and do is just have all of my self-control force me to do things like wake up early in the morning and go to the gym <laughs> or uh, work crazy hours to get my work done. Okay. But if this person is right, then instead of trying to force myself to go to the gym, if I surround myself with athletes, people who go to the gym all the time, mm -hmm. then it will naturally be part of my activities. Okay. Instead of going for a Twice big eight. dinner or drinks, uh, we would meet up at the gym and work out together. Okay. And so I realized that the most important thing I should do is connect with extraordinary people. Mm. The problem I had was that nobody knew who I was or even cared. <laughs> and so I had to figure out not what will get their attention, okay. but what will get their interest. Okay. How do I get somebody who's really important to be interested in me? Mm so that we will be able to connect. And here's the most important thing. Okay. I realized that I came across this study about um, obesity when people are overweight. Uh -huh. And the researchers were curious, is obesity something that spreads from person to person, like a cold, or is it a percentage of the population, mm -hmm. right? So, and what they found was shocking. If you have a friend who's very overweight, your chances of becoming overweight increase by 45%. Uh -huh. right. Your friends who have never met them, mm -hmm. their chances increase by 20%. And their friends, three degrees out, their chances increase by 5%. Mm -hmm. And this kind of effect is true for happiness, marriage and divorce rates, smoking habits, voting habits. Mm -hmm. And so I realized it's not just about knowing somebody. Okay. It's about connecting everybody so mm -hmm. that they can positively impact each other. Okay. Because mm -hmm. MK, me knowing you is great, but if I know four or five other amazing people and I connect them to each other, mm -hmm. we all become better friends and we can all impact each other in a more positive way. Mm. So my goal became, how do I not just find interesting people, mm. but how do I connect them to each other? Okay. And so I started interviewing a lot of people, trying to understand their lives. And eventually I created a secret dinner. Mm -hmm. 12 people are invited. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to talk about what they do or even give their last name. Mm -hmm. And when we, we, after we cook dinner together, okay. we sit down to eat and we find out we're sitting with Nobel laureates, Olympic medalists, uh, famous business leaders, editors in chief and so on and so forth. I've hosted 250 dinners in 10 cities in three countries. I've hosted thousands of guests. Um, and that's kind of the process. I want to emphasize the one thing, mm -hmm. the first dinners that I had, the people weren't nearly as impressive as they are now. Mm. Over time, because I kept doing it and I kept inviting and I kept bringing people together, then the guests became more and more impressive. That was over than yeah, 10, 12 years ago, right? 12 years. 12 yeah. years ago. So for the first time, it, there's no people who are very famous or yeah, oh, no. influence, okay? They, they had, you know, what Just I'd like the to say, community. Pro, the average person, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, they, they had like, they were the most impressive people I knew. And they're wonderful, right? But it would be somebody who was uh, a hairdresser that worked with fantastic mm. clients that maybe people had heard of, but she was not necessarily famous. It was uh, somebody on, who had you know, a following on Twitter, but it wasn't a million people, it was a few thousand. And then over time, dinner after dinner, the guests became more impressive because I would say, hey, who do you know that I should host? Uh -huh. And I'd get the names of interesting people and I'd begin to invite them. And so by the fifth dinner, we had somebody who won an award called an Emmy, which is for television, mm -hmm. uh, either making a show, directing it, or be acting in it. And then a few dinners later, we had somebody who had won an award for writing. And as we kept doing it, more and more people mm -hmm. were recommended. And I hired a team to do research. Mm -hmm. So you can hire on Upwork 
which is you know outsourced support for very inexpensive you can hire people to do research and communications for you so that you're not sitting every night trying to find all the people you want to meet you can have somebody else do it for you okay so how many times of influence dinner did you have so far Hundred, more than a thousand times <laughs> uh, how many dinners i've yeah. had 250 dinners uh -huh. and about 500 events in total because we do events besides the dinners uh -huh. So how many people uh, are oh, in, around you? Thousands. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally. So there's, there's two groups. There's the people who come to my dinners, mm -hmm. which are the like now very impressive people who are more impressive than me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have something called the salon. And mm -hmm. the salon is a gathering. After somebody comes to one dinner, mm -hmm. they usually don't come to another. Ah. But I invite them back every month to a gathering where about 100 of the former guests all come together. Mm -hmm. And then we have drinks and we have uh, talks by interesting people sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. Could you so, tell us about IKEA effect? That was very interesting. Yes. Yeah. So this is kind of wild. Uh -huh. Most people think that if, let's say, I want to get you to like me, what I have to do is be really nice to you and buy you things or, or do things for you. And that does work to some degree, but actually what works better okay. is something called the Ikea effect. Mm -hmm. And if people know Ikea, it's the Swedish furniture company where people have to assemble their own furniture. And so it turns out that when you have to assemble the furniture, you mm -hmm. care more about it. And anything we invest effort into, we care more about. Mm -hmm. So if I really wanted to get to know you, what I do is I'd find a way for you to invest effort into me and for me to invest effort back into you, mm -hmm. which is why we cook. Mm -hmm. So when we carved the turkey together on Thanksgiving, that was the Ikea effect, mm -hmm. right? Or when you hosted me, that was the Ikea effect. Mm -hmm. So instead of me trying to win you, let's say I've never met you. I might start off with asking something really small. Mm. Hey, MK, I know you've written several books. I've read them. I, but I've never found where you recommend other people's books. What are your two favorite books? Mm -hmm. The moment that you respond, okay. suddenly I'm seen as, as somebody worthy of mm -hmm. more effort. Mm -hmm. So next time I'll say, wow, I read the books. I loved them. Mm. You have five minutes to talk about it. Yeah. And suddenly mm -hmm. now we're investing effort into mm -hmm. something and it's each other and it's more likely that you'll agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a being part of that group, okay? Yes, Yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. Because for human beings, we didn't survive because we were the fastest or the strongest. They're much bigger okay. animals. Mm -hmm. We survived because we learned to work together. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And so when you invest effort into one another, mm -hmm. it's the basic structure for building community, which mm -hmm. is how we survived. Uh -huh. okay. So it, it, it was your own original idea to the using yeah. the IKEA effect or oh. yeah, <laughs> taking I, some other so idea. The, uh, so I realized that yeah. it worked. I didn't know why when I first started. Oh. At the beginning, I had no clue what was why it worked. Wow, but then genius. I came across research oh. uh, by his name is Dan Ariely. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that's why it works. Ah. And then I increased the amount of effort that people have to put in. Uh -huh. I made it more complicated because of Wow, that's amazing. So you mentioned in your book that the value of community comes, f com comes from influence. If you were to choose the three essential components of creating mm -hmm. a community, what would they be? So here's what's interesting. You want to find some way to connect with people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to find a way to build trust very quickly. Trust. Because if people okay. don't trust each other, they're not going to be part of a community. Mm -hmm. And you need a lot of consistency. Okay. You can't mm. expect to do something once mm -hmm. and for it to build community. Mm -hmm. You need multiple points of contact so that okay. people feel familiar. And uh, the reason for the familiarity is that uh, there's, <laughs> there's this funny thing called the mere exposure effect. Mm. Okay? okay? And... Uh, Here's a question. Okay. Do you know what the most famous painting in history is? I don't know. Paint? 
the most famous painting in history was, uh -huh. is probably the the Mona Lisa. Oh, Mona Lisa. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and but the only reason anybody knows it was that it was stolen about a hundred years ago, uh -huh. and so yeah. newspapers shared the story, mm -hmm. and then it became famous simply because we've seen it more than any other painting. If you actually look at the history, most art historians didn't think it's a good painting. Mm -hmm. But because of the consistency of seeing it more often, because newspapers told the story of okay. it getting stolen, mm -hmm. then we, we learn to like it. Mm -hmm. We tend to like and trust things that have consistency. It's why Coca-Cola put so many ads, up, mm -hmm. right? Now, so the consistency part is really important. The question is though, how do we make build trust quickly? If mm -hmm. I connect with you, I, I want to build trust quickly. Part of it is the Ikea effect, okay. right? So mm -hmm. I find ways to invest effort. Mm -hmm. The other part is something called a vulnerability loop. And a vulnerability loop is the basic unit of trust. It's the smallest unit. And okay. it works like this. People think that if I trust you, I'll be willing to be vulnerable. I'll be willing to share things or mm -hmm. put myself in a situation where I might get hurt. Mm -hmm. But it actually works the other way, which is if the two of us are talking and I say, MK, writing this book was the hardest thing I've ever done. In that moment, I've signaled vulnerability. Mm -hmm. If you make fun of me and you say, John, you're weak, you couldn't handle it, then trust will be reduced. I'm not going to share anything again, right? Yeah, right. But if you say, uh -huh. John, I know how you feel uh -huh. running a company and turning it into what it is today during a pandemic uh -huh. has been so hard, so much work. Uh -huh. and, and the moment that both of us can see that, uh -huh. we both know we're safe and we trust each other more. Yeah, yeah. And so if I want to build trust with you quickly, uh -huh. what I want to do is find ways to create those vulnerability loops. Uh -huh. Now, if we cook together, for example, Okay. Then suddenly I'll say, oh, MK, can you pass me the something, right? Mm -hmm. And before I even finish, you're already passing me a knife to cut the tomatoes. And in that moment, we've opened and closed a vulnerability loop very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the key, if you really want to connect with people, mm -hmm. is either to be willing to be vulnerable Okay. Or notice when somebody else is being vulnerable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. completing the loop. Mm -hmm. Now, there are special ways you can hack it to make it go faster and all that. But the most important thing to understand is that trust is built from vulnerability. Yeah, right. But, you know, there are many people afraid of yeah, showing their vulnerability, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, because mm. we've all been hurt at yeah. some point. But here's what's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, I've never, I haven't gotten to see many uh, Korean films. I've watched a lot of like, you know, the zombie movies and all that, <laughs> Train to Busan and all that. But uh, do you have romantic comedies in Korean culture? In American culture, romantic comedies always have a lead character that's kind of falling all over themselves uh -huh. and messing up a lot. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like I'm talking, I, I Hugh know. Grant or Zoe Deschanel or, and researchers were curious why we like it so much. Mm. And there's something called the pratfall effect. Okay. And it mm. works like this. If we mess up a little, mm -hmm. people like us more. <laughs> All right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's so, right. Oh, that's amazing. So they, they sent people into job interviews, uh -huh. like to go and to get a job. And they had one group give perfect interviews, mm -hmm. no mistakes, nothing. The other group gave the same interview. And then they accidentally spilled some coffee on themselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or dropped some papers. Mm -hmm. And the people who spilled and dropped scored higher. And that's because they, they were vulnerable. Uh, when, okay. when we try to look too perfect, uh -huh. we're not human. Uh -huh. If we mess up a little, not that I'm saying you should intentionally okay. mess up, but it's okay to mess up a little. Uh -huh. Now I know people... that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's something, so there's some way to communicate with others, right? Yeah. Yeah. Showing my vulnerability, showing my weak point, but the many people want to hug 
them, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Precisely, ah. because we want to root for you, mm -hmm. and it when somebody is too perfect, yes, right. it mm -hmm. makes us uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and so it's really hard to connect with them. Uh -huh. But if you look at the most successful teams, mm -hmm. they have very high levels of something called psychological safety. It's the feeling that I can express my opinion mm -hmm. without being scared that I'll be punished or kicked out of the group. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I can express my opinion freely, mm -hmm. but if everybody feels that they have to be perfect, nobody's going to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. team will fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a very vital point. So mm -hmm. next question is yeah, for people who want to create their own community. So one of the biggest mm -hmm. dilemmas they face is what item or topic they should start their community with. It could be mm. a social issue, a personal weakness, or a topic of interest. When creating a community, what should people consider when choosing their topic or item? Mm. So I'd, I'd say there's two things. The yeah. first is don't worry about getting it perfect the first time. Oh, okay. It's more important to just begin to bring people together. Okay, okay? it's not about item, so, it's in, it, invitation or connecting yes. people. So okay. just because Everybody wants, like, not necessarily everybody, but mm -hmm. people think, oh, I want a massive community of thousands of people or whatever it is, or maybe mm -hmm. even 50. The important thing is you want to build the muscle of how to gather people. And there's going to be a lot of, like, things that go wrong along the way. Mm -hmm. So don't focus on getting it perfect. First, focus on bringing <sighs> okay. people together. The second thing is whatever that topic is, whatever the, the focus of the community is, mm -hmm. It needs to be something that you're going to enjoy three years from now, okay. 10 years mm -hmm. from now. If you are only doing a community about uh, sports because you want to meet somebody cute who's an athlete, then after you meet that person, the community is going to fall apart mm -hmm. because you're not going to want to keep doing it. If I hated dinner... <laughs> <laughs> I would have stopped after the fifth one. Yeah. You can right. do two, mm -hmm. three, five of something. Mm -hmm. You can't do a hundred of something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it takes up a lot of time and effort, frankly. So mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself, for example, MK, what's, what are some things you care about besides karaoke? I know you love karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sharing yeah, people's yeah, human experience. I really uh -huh. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll give you an example of a community that I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, this woman invited people to her home okay. for wine and cheese. And then each person had to bring one story mm -hmm. on a specific idea. So okay. they'd give a topic like love. Mm -hmm. And each person would have to bring one story. It, I think, had to be three minutes long. Mm -hmm. And the entire group would come. They would drink wine. They would eat cheese. And each person would share their story. Mm -hmm. And it would share that human experience. Wow. Now, notice, it's very simple. That yeah. doesn't cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You could ask each person to bring a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. and cheese costs not very much money. So mm. notice, community doesn't need to cost a lot of money. Mm. It just needs to begin with an invitation. Mm. Now I get it. We don't need to worry about the great topic or item, okay? Yeah. I didn't, I've been people. gathering people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before okay. I did the influencers dinner, mm -hmm. I probably tried 20 other things. I did a sports night where we would play childhood games in the park. Mm -hmm. I did a, a dinner where we would celebrate in, in I'm Jewish, in Jewish culture, Friday mm -hmm. night dinners. We would all gather together and it was nice. Yeah. But eventually mm -hmm. I realized that I needed people to contribute so mm -hmm. that they felt involved. And so mm -hmm. we needed an activity where they put effort in. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got with cooking. But you could have a running group. Uh, you, maybe it's, uh, I have a friend who leads a group every mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. They meet for a hike and they bring an idea that they're struggling with and everybody mm -hmm. supports each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the very interesting. Yeah, in your book, you, you know, that there are many people who have a big group of social media followers, you know, such mm -hmm. as YouTube subscribers 
and Instagram followers. However, you said in your book that this kind of relationship only flows in one direction. A yeah. one directional relationship is not a community. Uh, do you mean it's not good enough to only have a lot of uh, yeah, audience and fans or followers, mm -hmm. right? So then what should we do to create a sense of community? A sense of community mm -hmm. comes from four things. There's membership. There are people on the inside and those that are on the outside. Yeah, membership. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need something that says, I'm part of it or I'm not. Mm -hmm. At the influencer's dinner, once somebody has cooked the dinner and participated, they're on the inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. With your organization, it might be that they subscribe and they join a course. And once they're in the course, you're part of the community. Mm -hmm. So you need some kind of line. The harder it is to cross that line, the closer the community will be. Oh, okay. So if you have special forces in the Korean military, mm -hmm. it's very hard to get in, <laughs> right? They have to put yeah. in a lot of effort. So they really care once they're on the inside. Uh -huh. So you want to balance between how difficult it is and who you want the community okay. to be. Mm -hmm. Because if you make it too hard, nobody's going to join. Mm -hmm. If you make it too easy, it's, then it doesn't necessarily feel special. So that's membership. Okay. The second mm. is influence. Influence. Which okay. is exactly what you just pointed to. If, if it's only one direction, you have mm -hmm. an audience. If influence flows both ways, you have a connection. Okay. So if people are part of a church, mm -hmm. they don't expect influence over the head of the church, but maybe even just being part of a Bible study group mm -hmm. and getting to express their ideas, that gives them the feeling like they're involved. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. If mm -hmm. you have no say, then you're just an audience member. Then I might as well buy a ticket, experience something and leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not part of a community. I might be a fan. Now, the third characteristic is an integration and fulfillment of needs. Mm -hmm. I get something from that community that's important to me. OK, mm -hmm. so if I really like to. Uh, if I really like to run okay. and your community is about uh, making clothing, it wouldn't necessarily make sense for me to join it because where you're going and where I'm going are two different places. So the community needs to be going to a place I care about. Mm -hmm. So the, the example I gave about the wine and cheese yeah. community with the stories, Mm -hmm. That was a storytelling community. If you don't want to hear people's stories, you are in the wrong place. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the final thing is that there's a shared history and culture. Uh -huh. cool. Meaning that we have values that okay. we ascribe to or a shared history and consistency that mm -hmm. will move forward. So right. if you look at... Um, a church group, they have the Bible, they have a history and stories, and people have a culture from that. Mm -hmm. If you even look at a company, companies have their history of how they were established. Mm -hmm. Right? So everybody knows the story of Apple starting off in a garage, mm -hmm. and Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. And, and that's the cultural history of innovation. And that lives within the community of people who work at Apple. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, they're very secretive and they're very tightly knit and people work there forever because they have a much stronger community than other companies. Mm, exactly. Okay. So what does it take for community to evolve into a business? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, do, what do you need to do? How to do you create... make money? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, so many, so th many people uh, are afraid of you breaking the a sense of community because yeah there will be the money involved then mm -hmm. yeah they're afraid of people's reaction so what do you need to do to create a profitable business model with managing a community so that they could mm -hmm. sustain someone's livelihood or something so there's a few different ways to do it yeah there mm -hmm. are some communities that are are um, the expectation from mm -hmm. the first day is that you pay, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So if you uh, want to go to TED mm -hmm. and be part of the TED community, you know the talks, uh, you have to pay. 
And that's that membership thing. If you're willing to pay, maybe you can get in, mm -hmm. right? So there's some that are like that. There are some that are sponsorship driven. So if you go to a lot of conferences, mm -hmm. the conference might be free, mm -hmm. but they then go to other companies and say, oh. hey, give us money to be there. Okay. Mm. The third thing you can do is I don't charge anything for my events because in my mind, having charging a celebrity 50, 100, 500, whatever dollars <laughs> to come doesn't make any sense because the value of that relationship is far more, right? Uh -huh. So what I do is I have so much access to people because of it that I could call up anybody I want to do business with and they'll take me seriously. Mm. Or I could invite them to the dinners and then we end up working together. Mm. Now, most of the people that come to the dinner have no business opportunity for me, right? I'm an Olympian and I are not going to do business together or a, uh, a what's it called? A uh, Nobel laureate. But the head of human resources at the biggest companies in the world or the C-suite hires me all the time. And so on average, every other dinner I do, somebody asks me to come and give a talk. Mm -hmm. And the cost of the dinner is very low and the, co the cost of the talk is very high. Yeah. So I've made friends with them before we've done business. So they like me more and we've cooked together mm -hmm. and then it converts. So one thing you could do is Let's say you are a athlete coach. You could run an athlete dinner for business development. Mm -hmm. You won't work with most of them, but you'll work with a lot of them okay. or some of them. Mm -hmm. The thing that I recommend is bring your current clients in with new clients mm -hmm. and have them participate together in the community mm -hmm. so that that way your clients can tell the potential clients how great you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing I recommend is start small. Okay. Companies often want very big communities right away. It doesn't work like that. Mm. You need to find something that works to try it a lot mm -hmm. and to keep bringing people back so that they feel belonging. Mm -hmm. If you do it once or twice, you might get a few clients that way if that's what you want. But more realistically, if you do it 20 times, people you'll find those people who are most dedicated to the community. Mm -hmm. And those people will recommend far more of the clients. Mm -hmm. Now, lastly, you could do something called a freemium model. Freemium mm -hmm. is you get something for free, but if you actually want to experience more, you uh -huh. have to pay for it. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, you can come to an initiation event and learn about the community. Okay. So right now I'm working with a um, community for athletes. The first experience is completely free. You come, you play games, you have activities, you have fun, and you meet and discover the types mm -hmm. of people. If you ever want to come again and be part of the community, mm -hmm. you have to pay. Okay. Mm. The f another version of that is that there's the community. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to participate in the trips and mm. big activities, then it's going to cost a lot of money. Mm. Right? So we're experimenting with this. I'm not trying to make any money off of it. Mm -hmm. But what I said is, uh, and in fact, I, I won't, and that's intentional because I don't want mm -hmm. my community to ever worry that I'm trying to make mm -hmm. money off of them. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we have thousands of people now and we're going to say, hey, we're taking over a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to come on this trip can pay six, $7,000 to participate mm -hmm. and you can come and join the trip. Okay. And I've selected the people that are going to be there. So mm -hmm. now it becomes very appealing. If I wanted to, I could have told the cruise ship, I expect $1,000 for each person. And with 120 mm -hmm. people, that's $120,000. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone can build this business. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you're building a, a sense of community. There's no money. Okay? Only effort yeah. your time and love yes. to yeah, people. So I think this is a really great, uh, what is that, the new business model. Okay, you can become an entrepreneur for a sense of your community. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think it's fantastic for uh -huh. a few reasons. Because you could be an insurance salesperson. Uh -huh. And if you build community, you could have a huge client list. Ah, right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You're a 
professional doctor, right? Mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. want to work with wealthy clientele, mm -hmm. then you build the community and they're naturally going to trust you more mm -hmm. and come to you for medical advice. Mm -hmm. But it mm -hmm. all comes from this idea that people want to belong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you can bring them together and give mm -hmm. them a sense of belonging, they will trust you and want to work with you. Yeah. The key is to look at it over the next 20 years, mm -hmm. not how much am I making off of each conversation, right? Or each right. person. Exactly. That's like, that's short-sighted because mm -hmm. the people who've brought me oddly the most business are the ones that mm -hmm. I never would have thought. And the people I became best friends with, once again, never would have mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. in, in community, it's not predictable. Mm -hmm. Right, you're right. So I've been thinking about, you know, the, what I've been doing with, yeah, in my career, then I think I'm sure, yeah, my job was creating a community, big community. Mm -hmm. I have a, you know, 1.4 million subscribers at my YouTube channel, and then I have many wow. big fans of mine. Then uh, for the last 30 years, I've been creating or building my community. That is mm -hmm. my business. I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right. you've done two things. One mm -hmm. is you've built a very large audience. Yeah. And now as technology has increased and mm -hmm. your events take place, the audience gets to actually connect with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives them the sense of community. Mm -hmm. All right. Because yeah. it, it goes beyond you. Mm -hmm. A community isn't about knowing the church leader. A mm -hmm. community is about all the people who go to church knowing each other. Mm-hmm. And the more we can connect people who are interested in your ideas to each other, mm -hmm. the stronger the community becomes. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. you can have local study groups in different cities throughout mm -hmm. the world. And you could have uh, and all of them supporting each other and people becoming more successful and then talking mm -hmm. about, hey, you need to come and join this community. And it begins mm -hmm. to spread from there. Mm -hmm. a, a great example is the company Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Salesforce make software that helps a lot of companies. And what got their success was that they started running meetings in different cities around the world and then giving the meetings to the people who were there. Mm -hmm. So rather than them running it, then the ownership was from the fan club. Mm -hmm. And now they have probably the largest, most dedicated tech community I've ever seen mm -hmm. in the world. Right, exactly. So, yo. Know, I provided a special course last month at my university, you know, MKYU, that how to become a great creator of community. I mm. provided that, yeah, this special course. The goal for my students next year is to build their own community, I mean, a sense of community with more mm -hmm. than a thousand real, real fans of them. Wow. Yeah, this can be the basis for their business in the future. Oh, for so sure. What kind of advice do you have for my students in building their own community? Okay. So number one, yeah. some people are introverted. Some people are extroverted, meaning some people feel mm. comfortable around a hundred people. Some people like to be around five. Yeah. Start where you feel comfortable because if you're introverted and you try to get a hundred people to come together, you will hate it and never want to do it again. And you'll say, I'm done. So start gathering four or five people rather mm. than a hundred. Mm. The second, do the things you enjoy, because if you don't enjoy them, you are not going to want to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three, you do not have to do everything. A community leader's job is to create the space where people come together. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do everything. In fact, in the early days, when I didn't know what I was doing, I had to depend on more people mm -hmm. to help me. And the more they helped me, the more they cared about the community. Mm -hmm. This means you have to be willing to ask for help and accept it. Mm -hmm. And that will actually lead to more people participating in the community, mm -hmm. not less. It's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth thing is more money doesn't make a better community. You don't have to spend mm -hmm. a lot. 
You can spend very little and find activities that are free or don't mm -hmm. cost anything. And you can actually ask people to bring things. So a few nights ago, I hosted uh, in New York, there's very, very low COVID numbers. Yeah. I hosted 40 people. Oh. And I said, hey, I want each person to either bring a meal, like a, a dish, a dessert, or a bottle of, of wine. Wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so almost everything that we had was fantastic food that other people brought. So uh -huh. that didn't cost me. Now I hired somebody to clean and I brought some extra food and all that. But in general, the experience was an amazing sense of community, mm -hmm. but at almost no cost. Mm. So keep your costs low. The places, luxury actually isolates people. When you have a lot of money, people end up very far apart from each other in their big houses and right, like community occurs when we depend on each other. So you don't need a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, anyone can start it, okay? And yeah, start anyone. It. Yeah. And look okay. at the poorest communities in the world. Mm -hmm. They need each other, so they're closer than often the wealthy people. Right. Okay, this, that will be the last question, okay? What should people consistently study in order to create a business around the community? I assume you are still studying a lot and doing yes. research about the topic. You are a behavioral scientist, okay? So what kind of research are you doing or studying about? Um, right now I'm studying what will cause people to feel community at work. Mm. I'm curious if I can add one hour to a company's training and the employees will suddenly very much care about each other. Can we just do that one thing? Is it maybe playing a game together or asking personal questions, mm. right? What is that one thing? Because you, you've had this experience where you talk to somebody and within 10 minutes, you think that they could be your best friend. How do we create that for everybody? How do we create connections and trust that happen almost instantaneously? And that's what I've been studying. What I recommend for other people is that they look at the different ways that they can connect, what activities. And here's something really important. In general, people connect over common ground, the things that they have in common. What is the fastest way you can find common ground between people? Do you have the same number of children? Did you grow up in the same town? Do you watch the same shows? The moment you have that one thing, mm -hmm. suddenly you're like, oh my God, you grew up you know, five feet from me. And did you go to that ice cream shop growing up, right? You could be on different sides politically, different sides religiously. You could be complete opposites, but you find out that one thing, one thing and suddenly, yeah. suddenly you're like, wow. Right. Wow, yeah, great. So, wow, do you have any plan to write other book next? Yeah, book? Wow. I, I don't know what it is yet. I'm, there, I have a few ideas. One is about how, um, one idea is about what actually creates real business success for people. Oh. So people think that it's, I, uh, there's a certain type of leader that succeeds or this is how I have to have my career. But it turns out that, really successful teams uh, have very different personalities that come together. So it's okay for you to be that weird personality. It'll actually make the team more successful. And that's what I'm, I'm looking at is what are the different personalities that we need? And how can you do the things that you're actually good at to become mm -hmm. disproportionately successful? Most people focus on the things that they're bad at and that doesn't help us most of the wow, time. That'll be great, yeah. Mm. Great, yeah. Okay, thanks so much for your time today. It's been great. It's been a great help for us, yeah, my students. Okay, and all this my is a treat. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me and for taking me for karaoke. Like it's been an absolute <laughs> honor and a privilege. It's so much fun. Thank you. So I really hope to yeah visit New York and meet you again. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, please, if you, I mean. You come to New York, you are taken care of. You will cook a terrible meal with me, and a, but you'll meet interesting people. It'll be oh, fantastic. 
Oh, great. I really want to join your influence dinner. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for today. Yeah. I hope to see you again soon. John. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That was great. Okay. That was my pleasure. Bye. Bye.